everyone, it's Nina. Thanks for joining me today for a new tutorial. I'm gonna be featuring a couple of memory box dies along with some watercoloring. I had this sapling collage die from Memory Box, which is a really gorgeous scene layering die. And you can do a lot of different things with this die, but what I wanted to show you was how I created sort of like a diorama feel to this die. So I've already cut the sapling collage die from some watercolor paper and I'm going to start watercoloring this in using my Prima watercolors and also a mix of Daniel Smith and Winsor and Newton as well. I'm going to start by adding down light layers of color first. I start off with light layers because that allows me to build depth and dimension on top of those layers. Because watercolor is translucent, you get that really great effect by having those watercolors show through and create additional texture new colors and also that depth that we want to be able to get a more realistic scene. When you're watercoloring something like this and starting off with layers, I really encourage you to start off with a larger brush. One that's going to give you a lot less control and it's going to help you work better at creating the light washes and not fuss with them. I just want to put down color first. I don't really want to play with it too much. So by using a large brush that helps me do that. Secondly, another reason a large brush is so helpful is because you can push that brush and get different types of strokes. See how I'm really smushing that brush down and letting the water from the brush start to pull that color out towards the outer edges of the paper? That's what's helpful about a larger brush. You can't do that with smaller brushes. So by working with larger brushes, you can manipulate the bristles to get the effect you want. As I continually add all of these different layers of color, you'll also notice I mix colors every now and then. Like here I had started off with a warmer brown and now I'm bringing in more of a golden brown. The first brown had a little bit more of a red tone to it and this one had a lot more gold. Here I'm doing the same thing in the grass. I'm bringing in a second layer on top of that, but this time bringing in some of that golden brown. That's going to kind of give you the effect of brown tones and also a little bit of dirt feel too because of course when you're in the woods you notice there's a lot of very more shrub kind of grass rather than straight grass. Now at this point I'm bringing in more depth and dimension into my scene. Now the leaves here, I didn't want to have to go and paint every single leaf. This dye isn't super detailed so the loose style of just dabbing on layers of green color on top of each other helps give the effect of those leaves. And as you'll notice, I'm also letting the bristles of the brush again dictate how those leaves are looking. I'm kind of smushing the brush here and there. I'm dabbing, I'm not using a lot of water because not having less water is going to give you a more vibrant but also more detailed brush stroke. Whereas if you have more water, it's going to water down that paint a little bit and you're not gonna get as much detail. Now as I work on adding those leaf layers, you'll notice I let things dry and I move on to another piece. That's helping those layers maintain their detail and it's not going to have those colors that we've got underneath lose that detail and it's gonna maintain all of those layers and help us achieve more depth. And you'll notice as I continually added more color, I added darker and darker greens until I got the depth and tone that I wanted in those leaves. I'm doing the same thing with the bark on all of the trees. I am using some light layers first and then bringing in continually more darker color and that helps give not only the detail to your scene but also the depth that we want too. Once my grass was dry, I also brought in a small brush. I did that with the bark. I had started off then with a big brush but then I moved on to the smaller brush to get those really fine details. Same thing with the grass. I added some grass detailing with a really small brush and then finally I finished off the entire piece with some splatters using a very fine detail brush too because that's going to give me finer splatter effects. Now this collage die works really well by layering these on top of something else. So I'm going to create a background for this. If you follow my Instagram you probably had already seen a sneak peek picture of this particular background that I'm creating. So I started off by creating the sky and you'll notice I'm not covering the entire sky. I want to have white areas because it's going to give me the look of clouds in the background. And again I'm letting that larger brush stroke dictate some of the texture that we've got here by smushing the brush and kind of pushing it around. You can see we get some really nice hard edges that give you the look of clouds in the background. 
Your brush is such a valuable tool because it allows you to get some really uh, interesting effects very easily without having to have tools or anything else to be able to achieve those styles. I put down a simple layer wash of grass and I'm going to start painting in some mountains. I thought mountains would be great to have in the distance and one of my favorite colors is moon glow. It's got a really nice beautiful purple tone especially when you've watered it down but when you have a more concentrated version of it it also has a black tone to it too. It's a very unique color and one of my most favorites of the Daniel Smith colors and I'm using that for the mountains in the distance. So I started off with a light layer so I get that nice purple but then I'm going to bring in additional more concentrated tones of that moon glow color and really intensify that mountains and give them a little bit of depth. And you'll notice I just painted a shape. I didn't go any detail with this because these are in the distance. I don't want any detail because you wouldn't see that in the distance of a scene like this. I'm flicking in more green and more golden brown to mimic the same color greens we had on the front panel that's going to layer on top of this. However, I'm not adding any detail to this too much and I'm doing a lot more flicking strokes simply because this again is going to be in the distance so we're not going to have a whole lot of detail here. Now I did lose the footage of me adding in the trees that did get corrupted so I don't have that particular piece intact. However, it was very simple to do. All I did was take my same brush that I've been using, the larger brush, that was a number six, and I just dabbed on little bits of green in a couple of different colors, but mostly darker tones, because I wanted to create the look of some trees in the distance, and of course those would be in the shadows and you wouldn't see a whole lot of depth to those. So by having just some little dots of green color here and there, that gave me the look of those trees in the distance. So now that I have my panels ready and they're completely dry, I'm going to take some foam tape and add this to the back of my panel. I did end up putting two layers of foam tape on this and I'll layer this over top of the scene where I feel like it really gives me a beautiful look. If I have any excess paper hanging off behind my panel, I can just trim that down with some scissors and that'll clean everything up really nicely. I really love the fact that you can customize these dies so easily because they're just silhouettes you can really do whatever you want to make these dies your own. I'm also bringing in another memory box die. This is their new Hello Folksy script die and I'm going to cut this from some white paper. I'm going to cut this four times so that I can layer them together and create a dimensional sentiment. One of my favorite glues to use is the Tonic Smooth Precision glue pen. Out of all the glue pens I've ever used, this one is my most favorite because it is so easy to use, it doesn't clog, the adhesive is super strong once it dries so nothing comes apart. I have been so happy with this glue pen so I encourage you if you're looking for one, this would be one for you to try out because I think you'll really enjoy using it. Simon Says Stamp and Memory Box have this collaborated die that they created called Flickering Butterflies and it's beautiful and I really love this because it's so versatile and easy to use with so many different cards. These butterflies are simple silhouettes that can be used in a variety of different ways. So I cut them from some watercolor paper that I had watercolored with just a straight wash of yellow. I needed just a little bit more touch of yellow into this card to really complement the golden tones and these were perfect. So I watercolored those and then cut them out, popped them up onto the card and that's going to finish off this beautiful scene using some of these fun memory box dies that I have really loved and I hope that it has inspired you to try using your dies to create really fun diorama scenes like this. Memory Box has a variety of collage dies like this one here so if you don't like the sapling they've got lots of other ones that you can do the exact same thing with and create beautiful scenes. I hope that you'll stop by my blog to get more information on this card including still pictures and I have links to the products used both over on my blog and in the video description below. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section below. And thanks so much for stopping by and spending some time with me today. I really appreciate it and I hope I'll see you again very soon with more inspiration. Thanks again and I hope you have a great day.